హలో వెల్కమ్ టు ఎంపీటీఎల్ ఎన్ఓసి ఆన్ ఇంట్రొడక్టరీ కోర్స్ ఆన్ పాయింట్ సెట్ పాలజీ పార్ట్ టూ సో యూ కంటిన్యూ విత్ ద స్టడీ ఆఫ్ కాంపాక్టిఫికేషన్ టుడే మోడ్యూల్ నైన్టీన్ అలెగ్జాండర్ ఆఫ్ కాంపాక్టిఫికేషన్ కంటిన్యూ లాస్ట్ టైమ్ వి ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ దిస్ స్పెషల్ వన్ పాయింట్ కాంపాక్టిఫికేషన్ of a locally compact house door space which will be automatically compact house door space this is what we have seen okay we have seen that any closed subspace of a compact space is compact this is not the case with an open subspace however it is not hard to prove that every open set in a compact toaster space is locally compact okay this you can do directly our last time whatever we proved theorem tells you that every locally compact toaster space is an open subset of a compact toaster space that is a corollary to the alexander's compactification that we produce here the other day here we shall prove the converse now take it up like the space x okay x is locally compact and host star if and only if it is an open subspace of a compact host star space okay so this is what we want to prove the only part all that you have to do is why the 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 larger space you take one point compactification namely alexandrov's compactification of x as in the previous theorem now let us come to the converse part if part suppose x component y is open and y is compact and of star okay clearly x is of star every subspace of the whole of space of solve so we are only left with proving local compactness right so given x belonging to u u open in x we need to find an open subset v so that x is inside v v contained inside v bar v bar also contained inside u and v bar compact since u is open in y okay y minus u is compact subset of y because it's a closed subset okay therefore we can find disjoint open subset v and w in x such that x is in v and y minus u is contained inside w okay now i am using that y is compact host of space therefore it is regular normal and so on it is a regularity here. this means that this v is contained in the y minus w is contained inside u okay v and v and w are disjoint open subsets since y minus w is a closed subset of y because w is open so y minus w is compact therefore v bar will be compact okay it follows that v is as required v bar is contained in here is closed set which is compact right so if v is contained here v bar is also contained in here so is compact that's all so it's easy part but we want it to record this one what happens to an open subset of a compact host of space and vice versa as a corollary to this theorem this is theorem that we are uh, earlier okay let k be a compact subset of an open set u in a locally compact host of space then there exists a continuous function f from 
f from x to 0 1 such that f of k equal to 1 and f of u c equal to 0. So this theorem we have proved earlier. Okay. Now that time also I had indicated that we will have a different proof. Now this becomes an easy consequence because starting with the k compact subset of an open subset u of a locally compact star space k contains a locally compact star star space is the situation but you put a one point compactification you are transferring the whole situation into in a compact star star space okay then this becomes a, an easy lemma easy uh, corollary that's what it is okay so i repeat we need to consider the case when x itself is not compact, right? <laughs> if it's x is compact, then there is nothing to prove. So consider one point computation, x star of x, which is which we have seen this, this one point computation is called is the Alexander compact we can take. Then k is compact in x star also because k is already a compact subset of x, so it's compact subset of x star also and it's closed because x star is off dot, okay. Anyway, u is open in x star, okay, since x is open in x star. Since a compact of star space is normal, that's all, all the time I'm using, by Eurydon's lemma you get this. So instead of local compactness, you are able to convert the whole thing into compact space by compactification. So this was one of the themes I had told you why people study compact spaces, compactifications, okay, so things which cannot be solved inside an arbitrary space, you can solve it, go into the compact space and then solve it and come back, so this is just a small illustration of that, okay, in any case, this is, this theorem itself we had proved directly in uh, 2.14. Okay, so let us examine a few simple examples first. We have already seen that the simplest example of one point compactification is any half open interval contained in the closed interval. Note that AB is a compactification of the full open interval also. Okay, but that is a two points are in there, two point compactification, it is not a one point. What is then the one point computation of this open interval? In order to answer this, we will actually answer a much more general question. Remember, a open interval AB is homeomorphic to R itself. So, in general, what I am asking is, what are the compactifications of Rn? Okay, one point compactification in particular. Since Rns are locally compact Hausdorff, we are actually talking about Alexandrov's compactification here. Okay. So let us have a clear geometric understanding of this compactification. Consider Rn, which is both locally compact and Hausdorff. By the above theorem, we know that the one point compactification, I am talking about the one point, remember is compact Hausdorff space. Indeed, a geometric description of this space is possible in this situation. Okay. We claim that for n greater than or equal to 2, there is an embedding of R n minus 1 into S n minus 1 such that, so we are only interested in, you know, S R to S 1. A single point, there is no point. So, R n minus 1, n is you know, to root and n equal to 2, this is R. R, R square, R cube, etc. we are interested in. Such that, the image of this embedding is, this is just one point. Namely, I am, I have chosen the specific point here, namely the north pole, 0, 0, 0, the last coordinate 1. Okay, it's usually called North Pole, and with minus one, it will be South South Pole. 
that will show that eta comma sn minus 1 is a one point compactification of rn minus 1 all that you have to do is put an embedding of this one in sn minus 1 minus this one clearly this is an open subset which is dense okay singleton n is a closure point of the whole thing all right so that will show that it is already an embedding and now we know that sn minus 1 is compact all right later on we will actually show that it is alexander's compactification alexandrov's compactification Okay, so recall some notations here. S n minus one is a unit sphere. Summation x i square equal to one. X one x two x one. So x i square equal to one, right? And n is the north pole, and u is the complement of the singleton n. Okay, so what I am going to do here? This is geometrically. I will explain it. What I am doing it here? Look at this north pole. Take any point other than the north pole. That is a point of U. It just means that this line segment extended, whatever to whatever extent you want, will hit the the R n minus one cross zero plane here. The nth coordinate being zero. Why? Because this line will never be parallel to the r n minus 1 it will not parallel to this one because the point x its n minus 1 coordinate is smaller than this one here only 0 001 is the only point on the sphere with the last coordinate being equal to 1 All our things are less, so when you join these, it will go down, 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 down somewhere. It will hit the this one, namely the nth coordinate becomes zero. Exactly at one point, this line segment, its end point is a point on the x-axis. For instance, suppose I take a point here. When you join this one, it will be somewhere here, the intersection point of this line segment and the plane. Okay. So this is got by merely this picture, right? So what is this function? X goes to phi x. This is called the stereographic projection, the stereographic projection usually. But you can specify this from the north pole. Okay. So let us now work out. A formula for phi x. Okay. So, how to write down the formula? You should start writing down equation or formula or parameterization, whatever is convenient to you, of this line, entire line. This line is is a line joining two points. Okay, which are a distinct point let's solve so t times this into 1 minus t times that will give you the entire line as t range from 0 to minus infinity plus infinity okay so here what i have done t times x plus 1 minus t times capital n as t inside r what is the point that we want we want this point to have its nth coordinate 0 that is the point of intersection of this line lx and the plane rn minus 1 cross 0 so what is the nth coordinate of this so remember this is a vector n n vector right t times x is t times xn that is the nth coordinate what is the nth coordinate of this one nth coordinate of capital n is 1 here right so it's 1 minus t So t times x n plus one minus t equal to zero. That will give you a unique value t, which is equal to one divided by one minus x n. Remember, this x n is not equal to one. That is very important here, right? So this is a valid solution. 
Okay, now go back here. Put t equal to 1 divided by 1 by x n minus 1. You precisely get the value of phi x. Okay. Therefore, phi x is nothing but the first coordinate divided by 1 by x minus, second coordinate divided by 1 by x minus, x n minus 1, so x n and so on. The last coordinate x n minus 1 1 minus x n. So, all coordinates divided by 1 by x. The nth coordinate is 0, so I do not have to write. This is a point of now r n minus 1. If you want to write r n minus 1 cross 0, then you have to put last coordinate 0 here. In order to compute the inverse map, we can reverse this geometric argument. So, go back here, start with a point here, start with a point on this plane. Okay. So, for this, suppose this, this is point. Now, how to get back x? Very easy. Namely, join phi x and n. Okay, line segment intersects the sphere exactly in one point other than n. n is already a point of that one. Okay, how to do that? In the parameter equation, parameter form of this line segment, you have to put the condition that the point x, whatever we want to solve for, lies on the sphere. So, that will give two solution x and n. We already know one solution. So, the other solution is very easy to determine. Okay. So, that is the geometric way of saying as well as how to solve the, the how to get the formula also. So, again I am writing y is an element of r n minus 1 cross 0. Okay, as a thought of as an n vector with the last coordinate being 0. Okay, t times y plus 1 minus t times n, t belonging to r is the line. Okay, when you take coordinates, take their square, take their sum that is equal to 1 is the condition I want this point to be on the sphere. So that gives you t square plus summation y i square plus 1 minus t square equal to 1. Okay, all the other coordinates of n are 0 here, right? So, only the last coordinate will give you this one. So, this is the same as if you factor out here 1 minus t square, you can write 1 and 1 cancels out. So, you get t into t into i range 1 to n minus 1 y square plus 1 minus 2 equal to 0. Okay, so the solution t equal to 0 corresponds to n. So, I do not want that. The other solution I want, namely cut down this t, what you get is this t equal to 2 divided by 1 plus summation y i square which is norm y square. For this t if you plug in here, what you get is the point x where y is phi x. So, this is phi inverse y. So, well, I am writing as eta, this is notation now, equal to phi inverse, namely eta y is nothing but 2y1 divided by 1 plus norm y square, etc. 2yn minus 1 divided by 1 plus norm y square, up to n minus 1 coordinate, this will give you that one. The nth coordinate have to be solved now. By what? By the equation summation y i squared is equal to 1. So, that will give you norm y square minus 1 to 1 plus norm y square. Okay. Since we have actually obtained this one uh, by 1 1 correspondence, is geometrically there is no need to verify that these two are inverses of each other. Okay, that is how I have put this one. If you are not satisfied, you can plug this formula for x inside here and see that phi composite theta as well as theta composite phi will be identity maps. Okay. So, look at the formula, they are not only continuous, 
they are differentiable as many times as you want therefore what we have is that both eta and phi are diffeomorphisms in their respective domain namely eta from rn minus 1 to u okay is a diffeomorphism on to u so it is an embedding uh, inside rn rn minus 1 okay thus what we have proved so far is eta comma sn minus 1 is a one point compactification of rn minus 1 okay so let us also verify that this one point compactification is actually alexandrov's compactification there are several ways of doing it one simple way is to get a homeomorphism from sn minus 1 to the this is alexander's comp alexandrov's compactification this homeomorphism which will be eta when you restrict it to rn minus 1 sitting inside here okay so all that i want is phi x which is defined on this open subset okay i extend it by just putting tau x equal to star the the extra point or whatever you want to if you want to write it as infinity you can write it as infinity okay whenever x is equal to n whenever x is not equal to n it is just a px so px has been extended like this so this function is well defined no problem because for x not equal to n i have px px is well defined is also continuous i am taking the the north pole to the infinity here or star here that's all the only thing we need to verify is continuity of this one when x equal to n okay so that is very easy to check that i will leave it to you sir okay once you check that continuity it follows that this tau is a homeomorphism because it's a bijection phi is already a one one mapping and the extra point goes to one single point here that's all so this is a bijection right bijection from where from a compact space to a hausdorff space therefore it is a homeomorphism moreover tau composite eta is what eta of any y right what is it is eta is phi inverse now phi of that y we phi of eta y is y so that's the identity map so eta com tau composite eta is identity similarly phi composite eta is also once once it is phi x and then you compose with eta that will be also identity map so this proves that eta sn minus 1 is equivalent to the alexandrov compactification of rn minus 1 okay so both ways so here rn minus 1 is sitting as an inclusion map here rn minus 1 is sitting via eta which is the inverse of phi all right so here we have made a homeomorphism which is an equivalence of of what of compactifications that we have de defined so the two compactifications are treated as one single because what we have is a compactification is an equivalence class okay in that sense it is the same equivalence same compactification that's all okay more generally instead of taking the north pole you could have taken any point p on sn minus 1 the geometric argument will be exactly going ditto the only thing you should not take all the time rn minus 1 cross 0 but you should take the corresponding whatever vector you take say p take the well uh, subspace which is perpendicular to that that's all and then do the shear of projection again 
as we have done earlier. Okay. Formulas will be more complicated, that's all. Geometry is as, as good as in this special case. There is no, no change there. Okay, so all of them would have given you different embeddings of Rn minus 1 inside Sn minus 1. The case n equal to 3 is of special interest because we can then express eta in terms of complex numbers. Identify R2 with complex number 3. Then eta can be written in a different way in terms of z. Suppose z is y1, y2 or y1 plus i y2. Then our formula here, this formula eta will become much simpler actually all this norm etc can be written nicely. This is z plus z bar by mod z square plus 1, z minus z bar by mod z square plus 1 mod z square minus 1 mod z square plus 1. Okay. So, we are working now with n equal to 3. Alright. So, this picture will actually give you the, the so called extended complex plane. C union infinity will be identified by this map with the S2, the, the unit sphere inside R3. Okay. As a subspace of R3, eta C gets the Euclidean matrix from R3, which when expressed in terms of the parameter Z can be thought of as a matrix on C itself. So, you are matrizing the complex number in a different way. Okay. So, what is the formula? Distance between, so I am writing as a dc instead of the usual uh, distance. dc is the, I tell you what this is, z comma z prime, which is nothing but the standard R3 norm here, the Euclidean norm, eta z minus eta z prime, norm of that. If you compute that eta z using that formula, it will be twice z minus z prime divided by 1 plus z square into 1 plus mod z prime square, the whole thing square root. So, this is called the called metric and that is why I have put a c here. Okay. So, when you take two points of c sitting inside S2, all that you have to do is join that chord, okay, they are inside S2, so the point, join that chord, look at the length, that length is precisely the Euclidean distance, so that is why it is called chord matrix. Okay. In particular, this metric on C is a bounded metric, topologically it will give you same, same uh, topology and that is the whole idea why it is a different metric. Okay. The same thing you can do for any Rn, but you will not get this nice formula. Because here we have used specific uh, algebra of complex numbers. That is all. Okay. We shall meet another interesting compactification of Rn minus 1 in chapter 10, namely example 10.15. Okay. There are, I have told you, many examples, many compactifications of a given non-compact space. Okay. So, it is not possible to discuss all of them. So, here is an exercise. The hint is what I want to draw your attention to. Namely, we uh, uh, proved a big theorem about locally compact Hofstadter spaces okay in 2.40 about the connected components of such a space and so on so if you use that one okay so you can solve this problem and when n equal to 3 
this has a special significance in the case of complex numbers okay so it will give you a characterization of simply connected domains in terms of purely in terms of you know without going to the without going to the competition between inside this one namely c minus say g is a uh, connected domain see a domain c minus g has no bounded components so this is the characterization which is purely in terms of topology point set topology so solve this exercise and enjoy it thank you next time we will study proper maths